Good afternoon, Linda. Good afternoon. How's the day treating you so far? Happy Wednesday. Ah, uh, pretty good. Cool. Well, we wanted to do another answer, question and answer from the QB community, right? And share it into our QB community live. Right. Um, so what did you bring to us today? Uh, I got a pretty good one. I, this one I've seen many times where this happens to people. So this uh, JLY Welcome 84. I started QuickBooks in February 2019, so last month, and I have invoices that have been paid in January 9th, 2019. Deposits were included in QuickBooks, but not the invoices. How can I add the invoices in? So it sounds like they were doing like paper invoicing um, at the same time, right? Yep. And now they want to get that stuff into QuickBooks Online. Sound about correct? It sounds like they hooked up their bank feed and got all their data in since yeah. January, but maybe just threw it in from the bank feed. Okay. Guessing. Um, so, yeah, in this situation, again, trying to unpack the, kind of the question that was in front of us, um, the assumptions were both basically going off of is like you said, they connected their bank accounts. The bank accounts show a bank feed that's coming in, right? And it's going to have money in, money out, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And most likely, all of these money ins were basically already accepted into the system, yeah. um, like going to revenue or something of that nature, I mm -hmm. would assume. Um, but the challenge is, if there's no invoice in the system also, now if they would actually put an invoice, go in and add the invoice and add the payment, it wouldn't be connecting the two and it could actually cause it to overstate their in, their revenues. Yeah, and if they've reconciled January and February already, then they they really have a problem. <laughs> you know, they need to go back and fix it without disrupting the reconciliation. Yes, it's a good point because the only way to undo a reconciliation is with the special accounting tools. So yep. we have the magic power. <laughs> yep. um, so the process we're gonna go through is uh, to do this where you can get everything linked up, we're gonna go in and we're going to create those individual invoices into the system. And then we need to go and apply a payment for each of those uh, invoices. But then we need to actually go in and match up the existing item that uh, was already deposited or pulled into the bank account mm -hmm. to the payment, which should be sitting inside of your undeposited funds, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is what we do see often when we get files. The people don't even realize they're just sitting in undeposited funds and they just bang in all their invoice, all their sales from the bank feed. And then, then maybe the CPA says, hey, what's this big balance in undeposited funds, which is something that happens all the time. Um, so as accountants, what we always do for our clients, and I, I stress it that way because maybe not every business owner would do it this way, but it's one of the ways we, we control the chaos is when we have revenues that are coming in, if they're not being invoiced in QuickBooks Online, we put everything to an account we call Revenue Query. It's just a unique way to call uncategorized income, and that way we can set up a bank rule and have it you know, captured and put into one place. Mm -hmm. What that does is it gives us the ability through reporting, um, you can basically come into reports here, go down to deposit detail, and you'll be able to pull up and see all the individual items that are making up those deposits. So now this is a little bit older data, so I know I'm gonna just type this in manually real quick here, since we did this for demo purposes, right? Yeah. Um, run the report. And so now these are all my different deposits that came in. And what we're seeing is we don't actually have like customer names next to them, so forth. Yeah. Um, we put into the system, I created one invoice already to show kind of what it would look like with the invoice in there, but we're also gonna show like creating the invoice. So um, we put everything in under cloud apps and we'll come back to this in one second, the 6816.75. That's an invoice we added so we can make this matching. But if we were going in to actually create the invoice itself, this is, if I go back, we'll see the 6732.60. That is the same 6732.60 here, okay? So I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna add this in, and we're doing that based on the idea, it's already been added, but I wanted to make the connection between the two, mm -hmm. okay? So with that added in, I'm gonna refresh this now. We're gonna see that 6732 
right here. So now we've got all of the deposits in, we've already done that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna to come to my invoice. We're gonna type, 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 put everything in, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to make sure dating is correct. That's an important part. You mm -hmm. need to have the invoice before the deposit date. Uh, theoretically, you should have those dates. And we'll go save. Actually, we can hit save first. If we do save, it then gives us the receive payment button here. So you don't have to go save, close, so forth. And I'm gonna receive the payment, okay? The key to this is when you receive payment, your dating needs to be, again, correct. You can't have it after the deposit date because that wouldn't make sense. Um, you should be marking the type of payment to make it easier. So let's pretend this was check and we'll go 1145 for the heck of it. And then the deposit to needs to be undeposited funds. Mandatory. Super important. <clears throat> and it's really important too, and this is something I see a lot of times with my customers or you know, people that, customers that I, work with they have um a lot of times they'll put the invoice in after but they got the payment i don't know how they do that how somebody can pay it before and that'll make that unapplied cash exactly you're gonna make um, sure dates are right really key yeah <clears throat> and it's a good topic we should try to cover with another video of like cash mm -hmm. versus accrual and why those accounts pop up that'd be a good one. Um, so invoice eight four i just put the date as eight five it could be the same day but just Perfect. for continuity I'm checking off the right one and the amount, okay? Uh, and we're gonna go save and close at that point. So now what that's done is now we've got an invoice in, now we have the actual payment in. If I was to go and look at a profit and loss at, for that specific day, what we're gonna find, and I forgot the date, uh, I'm sorry, 8-5. Yeah. Um, what we're gonna find is our revenue for that specific day will be doubled. Right. And this is so one will be the deposit and one's gonna be an accounts receivable transaction. Yep. Which, is, which is, you don't want. <laughs> I should actually go eight one. So we'll go run report. And there and it is, services in there, yeah. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to disconnect and put them back together the right way. Mm -hmm. um, so under our prior report, I'm going to duplicate this tab real quick so we can keep that there. Mm -hmm. And that way I can come back to my reports. Which is another nice tip. Yeah. Duplicating, that's the nice thing about using Chrome. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to deposit detail and put my correct time period in. So 1-1-2-0-1-7. One, one, Two twelve thirty one two zero one seven. Of course, we could shrink it, but we're good. <laughs> and we know this is the one we just did. So by coming here, I'm going to click on this one, and it's going to actually pull up the deposit you already accepted into the system. Now, all we have to do, if we scroll to the very bottom, we're going to see that's this information we already put in. So now, if I come back and I find my correct amount right here. Mm -hmm. I can click on that and then I can remove the bottom piece. But I want to show one other trick here too. If you've got a big long list, go control F, do your browser search here. We knew it was check 1145. It will automatically highlight it for you to take you to it faster. Nice. Click it. And because we want to make sure it's the same, right now we're doubled. Now I can delete this still keep my correct amount, mm -hmm. the 6732. If you question it, come click up here and it shows you what the bank feed actually showed so you don't like mismatch the amounts. Save and close. And it's still reconciled. So it's still here and the beauty is now you can see the customer name there also. Okay, let's go back to this other report. Let's refresh this. And now we only have the one. Perfect. So what this requires is you have to go in because you're wanting each of the invoices. You're going to have to go in, create each individual invoice, put the stuff into it. Um, if you deposited multiple payments at the same time, um, maybe that 6732 was actually 15500 and something mm -hmm. or other. That would be because you're actually taking two different payments, each one rung in, they both go to undeposited funds, 
And then by doing that, um, <laughs> hi, mom. <laughs> hi, mom. <laughs> um, guarantee she'll send another message in a second. <laughs> so um, the, you'd have two different items that you would combine together to then make that deposit. It's everybody who's taking checks to the bank, you put them in that top right drawer until you're ready to go to the bank and you're matching the bank slip so the amount goes incorrect. Did I miss anything on that? Nope, you didn't. And that's problem solved. It's a lot of steps. So hopefully, and we, I'll write it out in the, in the question when we post this. But um, yeah, I don't think you missed any steps, but it, it is a lot of steps, but it's doable. And you only got to do a month, so it's not that bad. And I think it'll be good. Then once you get the invoicing in, you know, we can uh, get you set up with the merchant processing through into it as well. And then it'll start doing some of that matching and stuff for you automatically and get you payment faster. Yeah, magical. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for the time. Uh, and as always, here's wishing you a very successful week. Yes. Bye, Mom. <laughs> Bye, Mom.